Hey guys, the Lord here, back again with another review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Hasbro Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Voyager Class Rhinox. Now before we get into it here, let us first take a look see at both the front and the back of the packaging. So without further ado to you, let's get into it. Now before we get into the meat and taters of this review, good old Rhinox here does come with two, count them, two saw blade minigun thingies. And these saw blade minigun thingies can connect to one another, which can be easier said than done sometimes, for easy, question mark, storage in beast mode, or, and of course, take them apart so he can dual wield them in robot mode and there's actually a place to store these in said robot mode but we'll talk about that in just a moment taking a closer look at good old rhinox yeah i really like this figure but of all the voyagers in this kingdom line i think rhinox falls just teeny tiny bit short in my opinion and that's due in part to the fact that he's got some engineering stuff going on that just seems like it would have been better implemented on any other figure in this line. For example, the back here, you got the rhino head and the upper back of the rhino just kind of sitting there. I feel like any other figure in this line, this would have collapsed a little better. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but it just doesn't seem to just doesn't seem up to par with the rest of the figures in this line on top of the fact that he doesn't have the cool mouth behind the head thing going on which every rhinox figure has had to this point in time so i don't know what's up with that i will go into this a little bit more in beast mode though then he also has this fake mouth here which given the size of the mouth on the rhino head here that makes sense, but still the Thrilling 30 version had the legit open mouth going over the torso like this. It just seems to me like the Thrilling 30 figure was ahead of its time and should have come out in this line. And this guy seems a bit more in line with the Thrilling 30 stuff and should have came out back then. A bit of a downgrade, as it were, which is unfortunate because almost every other figure in this Kingdom line has been really solid. For the most part, there have been some hiccups here and there, but nothing too bad. I'd also like to mention that all of the Rhino bits are hard plastic. And that makes his transformation from beast to robot or robot to beast, whichever you prefer. Pick your poison, I guess. They're both a pain in the balls. Like, stuff gets in the way, it's cumbersome to work with. Again, all stuff I reiterate in beast mode here but just he seems to fall short compared to the other figures in this line but i guess they can't all be winners right i just wish the uh loser was a ten dollar figure and not a thirty dollar figure of a character i really like but that's besides the point i guess as far as articulation on this guy goes he does have a ball joint in the head can look up and down a little bit a little bit of tilt and side to side shoulders go out to the side which I could probably forgive this if this had an extra hinge and folded up and his legs weren't so much of a pain in the butt. Other than that, eh, it's kind of lame considering the, thrilly, the Thrilling 30 didn't have that either. The Thrilly 30, woohoo! Um, but you can rotate the shoulder as well. He does have a single joint in the elbow as well as rotation. His wrists do hinge up and down, so he has the appropriate hinge for holding weapons, ironically. Did one thing right, I guess. Does have a waist swivel, which works fine. Hips kick out to the side, back down, kick forward and back. If you move these out of the way, you get a little bit more range out of that. You can kick his leg up higher, but they're supposed to be folded forward like this. He has a double joint at the knee, which works pretty well. He also has rotation at the knee, which can be easier said than done to move sometimes, so be careful with that. Then he has all the range in the ankles you could possibly want. Not a lot of forward, but he can move back. He can tilt. 
This side's a little loose on mine. It's kind of... It's not terrible, I guess. But yeah, that's Rhinox in a nutshell. He's cool, but unfortunately he does have quite a few shortcomings compared to a lot of the other characters in this line. That said, I did say he did have some weapon storage, and there it is on the back. You can take these. I personally like to, you know, fill this gap out, so I tend to put them this way. But I can only assume the proper way to do it. is that way but that looks kind of eh. it looks kind of silly no matter how you do it so I'm just gonna do it the way I did it before and have them facing the inside to kind of fill out some of the gaps in his torso again cool figure but just has some shortcomings that a lot of other figures in this line do not have so I don't know what's up with that but at any rate it's Rhinox for you. He's awesome. He's a core member of the Maximals. You definitely gotta have him, but I just wish he was a little better. So with that being said, let's now move on and take a look at some size comparisons. First up, here's Rhinox next to a couple fellow Maximals, the Deluxe Class Cheetor and Core Class Rat Trap. Next up, here he is alongside a couple other Maximals, the Voyager Class Dinobot and Optimus Primal. And last, but certainly not least, we have our two regulars, the Mythic Legion's Brother Mandibulus. I love its spawn was usual. Towers over everyone. Not by much, mind you, but that's all about to change. So with that being said, let's get Rhinox transformed into his beast mode. Taking a closer look at good old Rhinox in his beast mode here. And if I'm being... 110% honest with you, of the Beast Wars characters in this Kingdom line, he by far has the most annoying transformation into Beast Mode and or Robot Mode. Mostly because of his bupkis here. And while it may not be particularly difficult or hard, it is very tedious, it is very cumbersome, and you kind of got to just push some things that uh, you normally wouldn't have to do on a lot of the other figures in this line. So, for that, I'm going to give him the weakest transformation uh, award. Other than that, though, he looks solid in both modes, for the most part. I think the horn here, the second horn, is a little weird. I think it's too long and should have been a little bit straighter, because I think the Thrilling 30 Rhinox, his horns were arranged more like that. And it looked a little better. I'm sure there are rhinos that look like this, but I prefer the horn spaced out a little bit and the one to be a little bit shorter than the other, as opposed to them both being close to the same height. That said, also, when you open his mouth, which it's nice that it opens, it just looks kind of weird. And the fact that he only has teeth on his jaw and not in the top here kind of sucks because you can pry this open and have it open in robot mode you know like he usually does in the Beast Wars series and I even think the uh, Netflix Kingdom series is uh, Rhino head had an open mouth on his back but since it doesn't have teeth in there it doesn't look right it's just a hole and it looks kind of cheap so that's not ideal that said you can also store his weapons in his butt kiss, but I haven't really managed to figure out how that works. So they're just kind of rattling around right now. Uh, of course, they're not doing anything to make me look stupid, but there you go. But uh, they do tab in, I assure you. I Again, just not smart enough to figure that out right now. Because getting him this far was hard enough. <laughs> that said, though... Really decent looking Rhino mode. I have no complaints other than the minor few with the head here. Other than that, the rest looks fine. Yeah, it's got panel lines, but it's a Transformer. It's going to have those, so kind of hard to avoid that. Is it as strong as the Thrilling 30? Probably not. I'm going to be honest with you. In fact, if you have that figure, you could probably even skip this one and just stick with that. It is pretty good as far as scale goes with the uh, kingdom line but 
I don't have that figure. I've had most of it, but it was missing parts, so I got rid of it. Saw it at a toy show, though. I think it was for 20 30 bucks, And I passed it up like a dumbass. And, uh, yeah, probably should have bought that, but oh well. Uh, that said, I do have the Thrilling 30 Waspinator, Rat Trap, and... Is that it? I don't remember. But at any rate, uh, no real articulation on this mode. He does have some swivels and things in the legs, but nothing crazy. And his tail is uh, sculpted onto his bupkis there. So, you don't get a whole lot with this mode. It's just kind of a brick. And it just sits there and looks like a rhino. Which is uh, pretty much what it's supposed to do. So, with that being said, let's now move on and take a look at some size comparisons. First up, here is Rhinox once again next to the Deluxe Class Cheetor and Core Class Rat Trap. Next up, here he is alongside the Voyager Class Dinobot and Optimus Primal. And last, but certainly not least, we have our two regulars, the Mythic Legion's Brother Mandibulus. I love it spawn as usual, towers over everyone. So much so that in this case, he's making Rhinox here look like a little itty bitty baby rhinoceros. So, with that being said, time to wrap things up. Some final thoughts. Overall, and even though I do really like this figure and I'm very happy to have finally completed my Beast Wars lineup, I do still think that good old Rhinox here falls a little bit short compared to the other figures in the War for Cybertron Kingdom series, especially the Voyager class figures who just seem to have a little bit more going on as far as engineering goes just makes me sad to see Rhinox get the short end of the stick because he is one of my favorite characters from Beast Wars and he is essentially the Ironhide of the Beast Wars crew after all, so it would have been nice to see him get his due. That said, I think the only way Hasbro could have fixed the problems I did have with this figure would have been to make him into a leader class. Yeah, he would have been a little bit large and in charge, but if anyone is going to be large and in charge, it damn well better be Rhinox here. So, with that being said, if you do have the Thrilling 30 release of this character, I think you can afford to pass on this one and just stick to that one. I think for the time, it's a little bit ahead of its time and works just fine with the other figures in the Kingdom line. Didn't intend for that to rhyme, but hell, it did. So deal with it. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you are so inclined, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know whenever I upload more reviews like this one. If you haven't already, please hit me up on Instagram at Overlord Productions. But as always, keep the comment civil. This world sucks enough as it is, especially when you get the short end of the stick like poor Rhinox here. Poor guy. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.